Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today we are continuing on with my Edge Browser Control Series, putting a browser right in your Access Databases, right in the form. Today is part seven. We're going to learn about the navigation events. Because stuff can happen either before the browser control starts navigating or when it finishes navigating to a page. We're going to do that and we're going to add a little refresh button. So all that's coming up in part seven. And of course, this is part seven of a series. So what does that mean? Well, that means if you haven't watched parts one through six, go do that first, then come on back. Okay, here we are back in our database. And one thing that I want to do is add a refresh button, because sometimes when you're on a page, you might want to refresh it. Most browsers have a reset. Reset? Can I say reset? Most browsers have a reset button. Usually it's up here. All right, here it is on Edge. There's the same thing in Chrome. So let's add one to our browser here, Design View. Let's slide this URL over even some more here. And I am just gonna copy one of these buttons, copy, paste, put it right there. Let's give it a name. Refresh button. And I'm just gonna put whatever caption you want. I'm just gonna put an ampersand in it like that. Kinda looks like a little swirly for a refresh, right? You could put pictures in there. You could do whatever you want. I've got lots of other videos that cover how to put pictures and buttons. Now, as far as the code goes, we're going to also use our exec Java that we built previously. And it's just a command, again, a JavaScript command we can use to refresh the page, right? Location dot reload. That's it. That's all I got to do. Again, if you're going to be doing a lot with this, with the web browser stuff, learn some JavaScript. I don't have a JavaScript tutorial yet. I've been planning one for years, but I just haven't gotten around to it. Been too busy with access. I got lots of other stuff I want to do lessons on. All right, save it. Let's close it. Close it. Open it. Go somewhere. Navigate somewhere else. All right. And then hit the refresh button. And you should watch it refresh. There you go. Okay, and yeah, it worked. That's good for like if you got like uh, timely information on there, like a stock price or you know something like that. You want to see the page refresh. And yes, if you want to do an automatic refresh, you can do it either with JavaScript or with your VB code for the timer event. Nope, someone's beaming in. Now notice when I navigated to this different page, my URL bar didn't update, right? Because this only updates when we tell it to, right? If I click on a button, we update that URL ourselves. Or if I use the bookmark bar that we built in the extended cut of the last class, part six, if I pick one of these like Microsoft, then it updates, but only when we tell it to, okay? If we are on a page and we browse somewhere else, it doesn't update that. So we need a way to update that. But how do we intercept when the user clicks on these links inside the page here? Well, there's two different events that we can use that are associated with the browser control. There's on before navigation and on document complete. All right, let's start with on document complete. This guy is gonna fire whenever the browser is done loading a page. All right, wherever it happened to be. So when, the, when it's done loading the page, we can just say, hey, why don't you take the current URL, whatever page you're on, and put it up here. How's that sound? Okay, let's go to document complete, dot, dot, dot. That'll bring up our visual basic editor. And remember that bug that I mentioned before? Well, I actually got a response back from one of the guys on the access team, and he said they're going to look at it. It's also, um, he, he basically said that if you if you pick an, uh, an event over here that the browser supports, you shouldn't have that issue. If you pick one of these guys over here that the browser doesn't support yet, it might crash access. But the problem that I experienced was if the browser has no control or uh, no code in it yet at all, and you drop this down in a brand new database, it will crash if you pick the, the web browser control. So just be careful of that until they get it fixed. All right, anyways, down here I'm in WB document complete. This is gonna run when the web browser finishes loading whatever page you told it to go to, and it's gonna bring in URL, okay, which is the final URL that you landed and you ended up on. So now right here, I'm just gonna say my URL, which is my text box, equals URL. Just put in the text box wherever you ended up, right? Save it. Come back out here. Let's close this. Close this. Open her up. Go to 599cd.com. Let's browse to this. 
And there you go. As soon as it's done, that's the final page right there. All right? If I go to my seminars page, and it takes a second. There it goes. See? All right? So there's the whole thing and everything in it is done loading. Some pages have other pages that it loads inside them. Okay? And there you go. There's the final URL up top there. Now, just like we have our own load page function, because we're going to do more stuff in here, I'm going to also make a uh, page loaded function. It can actually be a subroutine because um, it's not going to actually be something we call. So I'm going to make a uh, page loaded subroutine. So private sub. This could be a sub because it's not going to be in the event properties. All right. Let's say uh, page loaded URL as a string. Okay, and I'm going to take this code here, and I'm going to move that up into here. And while we're at it, let's do something extra too. Let's put in here status page loaded. So we can start to see in the status box, right? This guy over here, the status box, let's start to see what the browser is doing. Okay, let's do it in our load page as well. Before we actually navigate, let's go in here and say status navigating. And you can put the URL in there too if you want to. You can say navigating to, you know, 599cd.com. But these get pretty long and then it fills up the box. I just want to know that it's in the process of navigating or now it's the page is done. It's loaded. Okay. So now down here, we're going to say page loaded URL. Or page loaded space URL. My bad. Right. URL is the. Uh, the property there or the, uh, the parameter there. Right. Page loaded. Send it up here now. Give it a quick debug compile and you get a compile error. It says by ref argument. Here's the important part. Type mismatch. Okay. What does a type mismatch mean? Well, that means you're trying to send a type of data that this sub is expecting and it's wrong. All right. It wants URL as a string, but take a look really close right here. You get a variant down there. Variant just basically means it can accept anything. It doesn't know what, you know, what kind it could be a number, could be currency, could be whatever. All right, but since this is a variant, we can't pass it as a variant up here. So we have to convert it to a string. It should always be a string, so that's not really a problem. So I'm going to say convert to string, C-S-T-R, and then that just makes it a string. That's called typecasting. I got a whole separate video on converting between different types. There's C string, C long, C bool, C whatever. There's all kinds of C functions, right? All right, so now that we've typecasted it, we can go over here, debug, compile. It should work just fine. Okay. All right. Let's save it. Come back out here. Let's close it. Save changes. Yes. Reopen it. Hit the button. And then you'll see, boom, there it goes. And it works. You can see the navigating popped up and then page loaded popped up. Go somewhere else. Navigating page loaded. Right. Okay. Now, if I do go somewhere else. Okay. Notice how the page loaded shows up. But the navigating's not showing up. See, that's because we're not, the, the browser isn't telling us that the user clicked on a link in here. That only fires when we click on a button. So that's what that other event is for. All right, that's what that on before navigation is. This runs when you get, when the browser gets the command to start moving, whether the user clicked on a link inside the browser control or not, but before it actually starts to navigate, we can use that as well to update the user interface. So let's go into here. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move. Let's move this stuff. Okay. Out of load page. And let's put it down here. Okay. And we're going to run into the same typecasting problem here because again, oh no, actually, you know, on this one, the URL is a string. So we're good. We could leave that like that. All right, what's going to happen is we're going to call our load page, all right, which is going to issue the navigate command. It's going to come down here and it's going to tell the browser to go. And then before it starts navigating, it's going to update the URL and tell the status box that we're navigating. Okay. Now, yes, it will be updating the my URL, my URL box a couple times. It's going, to nav it's going to update it every time it navigates and every time it finishes. And, and that's good to have, even though it's going to update twice because Sometimes the URL that you try to navigate to isn't the one that you end up on. A lot of websites do redirection, mine included. So if you, if you type in something and it's like a short URL and it takes you somewhere else, so that's good to see. And if you watch, let's save this. All right, let's close it. 
close it, close it, open it back up again. All right, if you go to my website, okay, this URL right here is, you'll, you watch this up here, you'll see it flash. Click, it goes like three places. Because <laughs> I got a lot of redirects on my website. But, see, navigate, 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 navigate. It, it redirected three times and it finally ended up on that page there. Okay, click, navigate it twice. I've got a tiny URL thing. So to make my short URLs, right, like I showed you on this here, that's a short URL. So that's actually in a database. If this page doesn't exist, it looks it up in a database on my site and finds out what actual page it goes to. And then it dumps you on something that looks like this. So that's all that is. All right, so there we go. Now we know how to add a little refresh button and we know how to use the two events that happen when the browser starts navigating and when it finishes navigating. Okay. In today's extended cut for the members, we're going to make a little navigating indicator right there. All right. So when you navigate someplace, it pops up there. You can see the little dots moving, right? Look at that. Isn't that cute? All right. See? Whee! That's going to involve a little bit more programming and a timer event. So it's pretty cool. Of course it's cool. I'm doing it. <laughs> Remember. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos. Not just this one, all of them. Lots of them, hundreds of them. Plenty of stuff to watch. And gold members get access to my code vault, and you can download these cool databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus, everybody gets free classes. So check it out. And if you like this stuff, if you like learning access with me, I got tons of developer lessons on my website. I start with the basics, and I take you all the way through building advanced invoicing and math stuff and all the functions and trigonometry and all yeah crazy stuff lots of stuff but i keep it fun so check it out there's a link it's on my website but that's gonna do it for part seven that's your tech help video for today part eight's coming up soon i'm gonna show you how to actually get the text off the page in the browser that's gonna be pretty fun but that's gonna be your tech help video for today i hope you learned something live long and prosper my friends i'll see you next time if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming as long as you keep watching them I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free access level one course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You could find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing. Free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, 
Level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two. It's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject and I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.